today we will be simulating tarpaul case with uh, row central foam like how sir explained meanwhile i will also start downloading and uh, follow along okay you can just paste it anywhere as of now now i will tell you uh, what folders to extract and paste it in your run directory so after you download you would see something like this nozzle hyper some number uh, dot zip so first we will extract using winrar so i will extract using winrar and uh, extract to and extract files extract here three options will be there you press extract here so after you do that you will get a folder called nozzle you open that inside that you will be finding three files so one a folder and two files so this is a video which you can uh, look at so that is a spoken tutorial made much before it is made in ubuntu so if you want to know how the block mesh is made uh, how all the boundary conditions are set you can watch the video later but if you just want to look at the uh, presentation which they used in the video you can open and see the pdf file which is there or else if you just want to follow along with me then we will proceed from here so after you get into the uh, folder called case files you will find something called nozzle folder so inside the nozzle folder we will have the main working files right so what you have to do is just copy the nozzle folder and open your terminal after you open your terminal uh, we can start to create a folder for this exact case okay first i will go to the run directory your terminal will look something like this okay now we will open explorer at this place inside the run directory and we will paste the nozzle folder which we just copied in the run directory so once you are you have pasted the nozzle folder in your run directory then all we have to do is stay in the terminal and we should not change the directory at all so we can do everything within this run directory so first we will enter the nozzle folder using cd nozzle so after you do this there is absolutely no need of changing any of the directory so whatever commands i am telling it will be through this directory so please do not change your directory then you will uh, face faults like file not found or folder not found so first we will see what are the folders which is there in this uh, folder so we will be having zero constant and system so this is the exact location where we will be running all our simulation so this is zero is the initial boundary conditions file which will have all the zero uh, zero the time step files then there is constant and there is system first let's see what is there inside zero so i will open everything using notepad for your convenience if you are using ubuntu you can feel free to open it with gedit but for wsl users it will be much easy to open with notepad so once uh, you know i i can see that i have a folder named zero but i cannot see what is there inside zero so what i can do is i will type zero slash and if i press tab once or twice it will show me what are the files which is there inside zero so i can open something very specific now in this case i am just going to open a velocity file okay inside the velocity file we can see there is inlet outlet nozzle back and front so there is something new here you did not see wedge type so we have seen uh, patches like inlet and outlet but here we are seeing something uh, you know it is just a wedge so we have to see what is it only while looking at the uh, geometry 
okay so i will close the notepad now i will open the next file which is the pressure file okay now when you saw the velocity file we did not give any inlet velocity it is given as zero gradient meaning the solver will calculate the inlet and outlet velocity because we have given a zero gradient then how is the flow happening the flow is happening because of the pressure so here you can see at the inlet we have given the type as total pressure the gamma so gamma is the compressibility ratio cp by cv specific heat so the ratio of specific heats for air it is 1.4 so we have defined that and we are giving the uh, initial inlet value pressure so that is uniform 10000 and again the value is uh, 10000 at the outlet we are giving a pressure which is less than what is given in the inlet so we are giving a pressure gradient along the uh, domain so that is causing the flow and for nozzle it is given as uh, zero gradient nozzle is the body of the nozzle so pressure is calculated at that point and front and back is chosen as wedge so uh, we have seen empty patches for front and back while doing a 2d case but what is a wedge so we will see that uh, after we run block mesh before that we have one more file to look at so if you do not close your notepad the terminal will look something like this so either you can close your notepad or press ctrl c here so that will close the notepad on its own but you can still find the notepad is uh, now open but it is not connected to the terminal anymore so that is one way of doing or you can close your notepad it's up to you so the last file we have to view in the initial boundary file so t is temperature file again the front and back is chosen as wedge the nozzle and outlet is chosen as zero gradient and inlet we are giving a fixed temperature that is 298 kelvins so everything here is uh, in kelvin as we can see in the dimensions this will be mass length and time so the fourth SI unit or the dimension which we are using is temperature which is in kelvin so the first one is mlt and the fourth one is uh, kelvin so that's it about the initial boundary cases now we will see the other folders you know like the system where our block mesh dict is placed so we will note we will open that in notepad so this is the block mesh dict file so after you open it you might not uh, understand anything based on what you have learned about block mesh dict earlier just like how we did in the aerodynamic case this is slightly advanced block mesh where uh, we are giving user defined code to generate curves so if you want to understand more you can look at the ppt which is or the pdf which is given along with this files the one which you downloaded so here you can see that they have included a function called code include which is uh, you know a way of defining user defined functions so they are using uh, user defined code to generate these curves so these curves will make up the geometry for block mesh so there are uh, lines splines edges so everything is defined and then when you scroll down you can see the normal uh, block mesh structure so that is defining the inlet outlet nozzle back and front here you can see the back and print is defined as a wedge nozzle is a wall just as we expect inlet and outlet are patches so that is what we uh, normally do so that is what is also followed here there is nothing uh, new in naming the or defining the type of patches or type of boundary but how the geometry is created is more advanced here you can try to change some values here and explore it but if you just want to take the default nozzle it's not a problem you can just leave it as such and you can follow along okay the next file inside the system is the control dict fv scheme and fv solution we have these three files more so first i will show you the control dict so the control dict shows the type of solver which we are going to use so the application which we will be using in this tutorial is row central foam this is very versatile for such cases so we are using row central foam the start time will be zero 
and the end time will be 0 0.4 seconds. So this is a transient solver. So we will be uh, defining the time step as well, which is defined by the delta t. So it is taken as uh, 10 power minus 6. So uh, it, it is a pretty small time step and uh, the simulation is going to run for a longer time, relatively longer time than what you did earlier. The right uh, control, these are just uh, default things which you can leave without changing anything. The next file which we have to look at is uh, FV schemes. Okay, as uh, you might have listened to the lecture, we have flux scheme which is uh, Kurga now here. And uh, I think someone asked in the first hands on session how we can change the DTT scheme from Lagrangian to Euler. So, here are some uh, ways of customizing your uh, schemes the finite volume schemes which will be used for your solution and we have also uh, defined other schemes which will be used here so this is the file which will know it will uh, tell open form the solver to choose which scheme we have to use to solve the certain simulation okay so we don't have to look at fp solution there isn't much but if you want to explore you can do it now again we are in the same directory we did not change any directory at all we are in the zero constant and system. So before we see the constant, first we will run our block mesh. So okay, now we will start creating the mesh. So the command to start running the mesh is just block mesh as usual. So after you type block mesh with M capital, hit enter. So it will not look like how we generally do. It will look very abstract, something like this, but you would need not worry. Just let it run without disturbing and it will end after some time. Let's wait. Okay, once it is over, you should be seeing something like this patch 0 to 5, inlet, outlet, nozzle, back, front, and axis will be created. And then there will be end. Okay, uh, you might wonder that we did not uh, name anything as axis, but we have created a wedge. So access will be there. Now let's see why it is actually created and we will view the geometry. So to view the geometry, you can do two things. If you are on an Ubuntu machine, you can directly hit Paraform and view it. But if you are on a WSL, I would recommend you to do touch space uh, nozzle dot foam and hit enter. Then we can open the case at explorer.exe space dot. Make sure that you are doing everything in the nozzle folder itself. You should not change the directory again. So after I hit the enter, the explorer will open. Here we can view the mesh. After we run the block mesh, you can see there is a new folder called dynamic code. You need not worry about it. It is created because of the user defined code which we have used inside block mesh. So now I will just open ParaView. Okay, after you hit apply on the left panel, you will see something like this. So you might wonder this does not look like a nozzle at all. We will come about it. This is just one small wedge of a nozzle. So if you can imagine the nozzle is a circular or say cylindrical kind of uh, revolved geometry. but it is uniform, right? So whatever the flow is happening, it's going to be the same along all the sides. So if we just take a slice of the wedge or a small section, it is going to be same throughout the nozzle. So if we just uh, get the values around here, it is enough. So why are we doing this instead of running the entire geometry to reduce the number of cells? When you run the simulation, you will know it is taking a lot of time to end the simulation. So as the number of cells increase, as the geometry gets bigger, the time will be taken longer as well. So to reduce in, uh, or simplify the geometry as much as possible, we are taking only a small wedge of the nozzle and we are viewing the results. It's more like doing a symmetry case. So you might see uh, when you use ANSYS fluent or something, we will, uh, you know, to take flow or a cylinder, we will just do the upper half and then reflect it to get the other half. 
So that is exactly what we are doing here. But instead of taking a small slice in the 2D, we are taking a wedge since this is a revolved part. Okay. So this is what we have here. Now we will see the mesh. So this is a very simplified block mesh, as you can see. It is completely hexahedral and you can see there is no thickness at all. So again, this is a 2D case. Now we will see what are the patches that we have created. There is inlet and outlet. This one is inlet and here we have the outlet and we have the nozzle patch, which is on the top. This is the wall which we have created. This is the only wall in this domain. And we have print. Hello. Yes. Okay. For this inlet and exit patches, I think yeah. we have used straight line to connect point one, two and four, five. Is that correct? Yeah, we have that as access here. Uh, no, no, I'm talking about the end points of the patches. Uh, point zero patch? and point number four are on the axis, I guess. Okay, so that is made for creating a block. After you create the block, we are creating a spline and the block adheres to the spline and creates a geometry. No, my question is, can we use arc to create a circle to join point number one, two and four, five? Yeah, you can do that, but it won't be a 2D case. That's the thing. All right. Okay. Then we have the front and back patch, which is uh, this one and this one. So that is all about the mesh. If you want to view the entire mesh, you can just select internal mesh and click apply. So this is all we have. And it is in the Z normal. Okay. Now we will close this and we will go to the terminal again. And we will see how we can run the simulation. So before we run the simulation, we have to know certain parameters which we are using, like the temperature and everything. So inside the constant folder, we have two, uh, one folder and two files. This poly mesh is the block mesh which you created. The poly mesh folder contains all the information from the block mesh which you have created. And Apart from that, we have two files. So one is momentum transport. The other one is thermophysical properties. First, the momentum transport is a very simple file. So it just says the sim simulation type is laminar. So we are running a laminar case. So that is all about momentum transport. But if we are going to choose something, you know, a, a turbulent case, then we will be uh, using RAS here and use K epsilon or K omega as palette alminars, like how we did for the airfoil case. But in this case, it is just a laminar. So we will leave it as such. To view what is there in the thermophysical properties, I will open it in Notepad. Now this is the main file which uh, contributes to all the thermal related property inputs. Okay, so we have a function here, thermotype. This, these parameters are mandatory for any thermophysical properties file. There is a type. So the type which we are using here is HE Psi Thermo. There are many models or many types which you can be using for thermo type. But in this case, we are just uh, sticking on with HE PSI Thermo. And for mixture, it is a pure mixture. It just contains air. There is no um, multi components. So we are multi compounds. So we are just defining it as pure mixture. And the transport is constant. Thermo is H constant, naming enthalpy constant. The equation of state is perfect gas. If you can recall what uh, Professor Janani explained, there is also another state called Bosonesque. So there are many states which you can be using. Here we are using uh, perfect gas. And this PC is, uh, you know, we will just define it as PC. We will come why we are doing that. The energy is sensible internal energy. There are other energy models as well. You can see through the documentation. So in this case, we are using sensible internal energy. And coming to the mixture, this will define all the parameters of the working fluid which we are using. In our case, it is air. So for air, we will be defining the molecular weight, which is 29. Everything is in SI units. So the CP is the specific heat at constant pressure, which is uh, in general, we'll be using 1.005. That is kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. But we will be taking in joule per kilogram Kelvin. Hence, it is uh, 1005. The HF is enthalpy of formation. So this is generally used for chemical mixtures. 
where there is a chemical reaction that is taking place so it is uh, you know the formulation which will be giving it the heat of fusion or enthalpy of formation that is what hf is in this case we do not have chemical mixing so we will be defining it as zero and for transport at very high reynolds number it is uh, you know convenient to treat the case as inviscid so we are defining mu as zero by you know considering the case as inviscid flow so if you want to define some viscosity you can proceed and type the value in si units so the prandtl number is taken as 100% efficiency to the viscous and the thermal efficiency so we are taking prandtl number as one this is not a realistic case if you want to uh, you know take a real prandtl number and simulate your case you can modify the values so that's it about the thermophysical properties as well now i will close this file now we are ready to run the simulation so is everyone Okay, how we can solve inverse problems? So I think I, I just answered it. If we want to define the viscosity, we can define the viscosity over there, the mu. It is dynamic viscosity, by the way. In this case, does the thickness affect the overall solution? So if you mean the thickness of the geometry, it does not affect the uh, results, but it can affect the uh, simulation because it will take a lot of time. It will not affect the overall solution. It is just same. We are just uh, you know, taking one small part of the nozzle, which will be approximately same as all the regions. Okay, then. So I will run the case. So to run the case, all you have to do is type row central foam and it will start running. So I will hit enter. So it has started, but I am stopping it in between because this is going to take a lot of time. I have already run it for uh, demonstration purpose. So I will show the code alone if you want to run it. Okay, it has gone. So the command is row central foam. I will also put in the chat box. So once you are in this directory, you can hit row central foam after you do the block mesh and we will be getting the simulation run so i have run it for our convenience now i will show it after you hit apply you will see something like this so the simulation is done and Initially, when you load the results, it will be at the 0 0.05 time step. But the simulation goes up to 0 0.4. If you let it long enough till the simulation ends, it will go up to 0 0.4. So I will load it directly. Uh, realistically, you, you will not be having the result by now because it takes a lot of time. So I'll you just see how I am post-processing it to make a complete 2D side of a nozzle. Then you can let the simulation run. After it is over, you can try to visualize. So first, I'm going to the last time step. Either you can choose the time step yourself or press this button and it will go to the latest time step. So it is in the pressure actually. So first, let's start with velocity and uh, you click on this. It will rescale to the visible data range. So after I hit that, you can see how the velocity actually changes the shock, how it is created then you can go to the pressure and hit rescale again you can see how the pressure varies and similarly for the temperature and the density so we can view all of these but it does not seem very uh, you know, convincing when we look at a nozzle only on the half it's not even a complete 2d right so what we have to do is first we will take a slice of the 2d so to take a slice, you can press on the fourth button here. It will say slice. And by default, it will make a slice on the X normal. So you can choose X, Y or Z normal here. For now, in this case, the geometry is in X, Y direction, X, Y plane. So we have to see, some, see the 2D plane through Z normal. So I'll press Z normal and click on apply. So if you want to hide the plane, just uh, Check out this show plane thing and the plane will not show. 
so if you see we no more have the wedge we just have a 2d plane okay now we go to the z normal now we have to do something called uh, reflect so where you can do that is go to sources on the top it is the fourth button to sources click on search then you need not press anything on the screen so it is not a search bar actually so after you hit on sources just hit search and start typing reflect so after you hit the uh, reflect first what you can see is when you hit apply it will by default make a reflection on the x minimum so this part is x minimum this is x maximum so similarly by default it will make a reflection on the x minimum plane you can change that to y minimum and see how it happens and this is exactly what we want okay so we are on the y minimum which is the ordinate and we are reflecting the entire thing over this plane so this is our pressure and the velocity and the temperature and we can also see the density so you have run the case that's it for uh, running row central foam for a nozzle excuse me yes uh, why you are not using an outlet domain for the nozzle so we are defining uh, outlet domain as well but we are not doing that in velocity instead of that we have defined it in the pressure so that is the only change which we are doing let me show you the zero file so in the velocity if we see we are giving the boundaries as zero gradient and in inlet and the outlet okay so the velocity is actually calculated based on the pressure so we are defining the pressure here so I'll open the pressure file. Here you can see we at the outlet we have chosen a lesser pressure than at the inlet. So that causes a pressure difference and thus a flow. Uh, can we rotate the wedge to create complete 3D? Not after we run the simulation, we can only do reflection. Uh, but if you want to run a 3D case entirely, you can even do that. That's not a problem. But after we run with this type of geometry, the wet geometry, I don't think we can revolve and make it into a 3D case. Uh, so what I'm asking is, it allows user to create a scalar and define an equation and then plot that property inside the para view. Mm, I searched for revolving the entire thing just like how we have reflect I thought we would have something in para view, but unfortunately, I couldn't find anything like that. But um, no, you can use Python, you know, take all these data, and if you can post process them, then of course you can make it. But right? what is the point in actually making a 2D thing? I have tried axis symmetric simulation using block mesh picked file and uh, by importing a mesh file from point wise. Uh, but in both the cases, after running 33 milliseconds, the simulation is getting floating point exception. Uh, okay. Can you tell me what, what can be the reason behind this. Are you using any turbulence models? Uh, no, not a turbulence model because the nozzle throat size is almost 1.5 micro uh, milli millimeter. So the flow is in laminar regime. Okay. So either your mesh is not small enough. If it is a transient case or your time step is not small enough. So floating point it's exception it's error is the case where the equation is hit by divided by zero case. So it continuously generates decimals and we could not get a finite value. So that is why we are getting floating point exception error. If you look at the residuals, it will just blow up instead of going down. So that is the case why we are getting the exception error. But if you want to solve it, you can try to reduce the mesh size or reduce the time step. You can check with the stability criteria formula. Okay, thanks. Okay. The pr professor in previous, uh, uh, previous. Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Showed a flow over a wedge or some kind of a ramp. Yeah. The deflection. Okay. deflection. So is it possible to sell a solve similar problem using this solver? Yes, we can do the exact thing using this solver. All you have to do is replace the mesh 
made in block mesh mm-hmm. and you can yes. import any mesh from software like salome g mesh or even fluent mesh you can input such meshes into open foam and you can run it or else there are other utilities like snappy hex mesh which is not covered in this uh, workshop you can use that to generate the mesh inside open foam itself just with the geometry if you have an stl yes. file you can use that to create a mesh inside open foam and you can run some similar cases using row central foam so all okay. you have to do is so, set the boundaries properly aha uh-huh. the uh, so that's my question actually the boundary problem will be uh, different for from this um, nozzle okay. problem right so yeah. could you so, for example the inlet and outlet and the wall boundary condition what could we set it for such problems yes so how we can do that is while we import some geometry or some mesh take example of salome so when you make a mesh you will be given a choice of making the naming selections you can recall that right. answers as well so after we do the naming selections uh, let's take case of answers fluent so after you make the naming selection you will save the file in a format called .msh you can import that file here and you can convert that into open form understandable understandable yes, this mesh format stand. so you can do that as well uh, my question is what the boundary condition like what yeah, is the so choice of same naming is imported here as well so what you can do is you know what is a wall right so you will be defining wall everything in similar condition like see in this case the nozzle is the wall so if you are importing something related to wall you will know the namings right so you will be defining slip or no slip over there and if it is inlet and outlet you will give zero graded but if you even are confused with what is the name of the boundaries which you have in, imported you can do this after you import the mesh you can open the mesh in para view then you can visualize here you can see right the mesh regions it will give all the namings here so you can check in check out and find what are the mesh regions you can do uh-huh. that i got it okay so it is very ideal to give namings just after you make a mesh but if you are using block mesh to make the namings it can be done as well while you are creating the block mesh itself you can give the name like how we did in this case we have given the name while making the mesh and you can also define what type of boundary it is and we can simulate it and uh, we can use the same thing as an empty boundary condition that the type yes if you are taking a 2d case and have an extrusion like how we did in the air foil case or what we did is day before yesterday so if you want to do something like that you can take the front and back plane and define it as empty okay so all we will have is something like this it will have only one element here as you can see this is just one cuboid on the z normal so this is what we consider as a 2d case so there is only one extrusion so this is front and back plane which is defined as empty then it will behave as a 2d case then you can take the slice and see it i think someone asked how we took the slice so i'll do it again you can see first uh, make sure that you are on you have clicked on paraform or whatever the uh, file dot form you have created then you have to press the fourth button this will show a slice when you click slice by default it will be on x normal so you have to change that to z normal on the left panel after you press that you can check out show plane it will hide the red color plane which is showing then click on apply then we will get a slice i hope it is clear yes okay after you get the slice go to sources on top and give search in search you type reflect hit enter and in this you can choose the plane on which you have to reflect for us this is y minimum and click on apply then you will get enter nozzle sir uh, reflect op- option is showing but after that uh, what to do sir means how to select uh, that after we load the results first we will slice so slice with z normal plane hide the plane and click on apply 
after that you can you know, directly go to filters and uh, show alphabetically if searching doesn't work for you click on filters hover over the word called alphabetical you will get something like this then you can choose uh reflect if it shows for you see so you just press reflect and before you do that make sure that you are clicking on slice so we are reflecting only the slice right so after you click make the slice make sure to press on slice and then you have to give the reflect so only then it's going to work on the after you press reflect change the plane to y minimum and click apply that's it Yes, sir. Due to a uh, display problem in Paraform, I um, just restarted my PC. How can I? Okay, uh, if you, you know last lost everything and you don't have a command prompt anymore, just like me, what you have to do is open your command prompt first. After you open your command prompt, you just go to the run directory there you will be able to find the nozzle folder which you placed so enter into the nozzle folder using the command cd nozzle before that i'll clear this okay the first command would be cd nozzle from your run directory okay so after entering cd nozzle you will find all of the cases like whatever simulation you have run you will find that there then you can open that location in explorer.exe space dot then you can load the nozzle.pom or para.pom whatever you have created the para view file so the files will always be there inside the location where you have run the simulation all you have to do is just open the para view file then it will run so it doesn't matter if you have closed the terminal or not if you go to the location properly the case directory properly then you can run it uh jashwant i think the problem is you are using 2012 or uh, is it my file yeah. not sure no i think you are using 2012 so if you are using different version i don't think this might work might or might not work it is the same problem that we told you previously right between different versions uh, the functionalities may not be the same the function name may change or there may be some major modifications as well if you are using open form 9 then it will work otherwise uh, there could be errors because open form 2012 is a different version it's an esa version so it will have its own different name or function so we have to other by that if you are making case for that one that version so uh, i have dropped the link for spoken tutorial 9 and 10 so if anyone got today's um, tutorial properly you can try this sir actually my velocity display is not showing the same as yours means in para view when i, I use that reflect option and then uh, applied it but the u magnitude the color is different yes yes okay if the color is different then it is a very simple problem you know it's not a problem at all okay on this left panel you can see there is a option called coloring so it stores specific values for example this is the pressure and this is the velocity because i have set this color but if you want to change the color you can press on edit this panel will open up if you want to see all the color maps which is available you can select from any of these the one i am using is uh, turbo if you can use that or you can choose anything like probably something like this it's up to you so anyways we are just going to uh, infer from the data or from the color map so you can choose anything you want
I think Akal, uh, the problem you are facing is that you did not press this button. You have to rescale the values to the, to whatever there is on the screen. So when you press this button, it will rescale all the data to visible range. So whatever is there on your screen, it will rescale to that. Let me uh, tell you one example. So if we see, it is all blue here, right? But it will have some variations. So if we isolate only this region and hit this button, it is going to change all the color map value, you know, the range from dark blue to dark red. Whatever data is available on the screen, it will rescale to this thing. So this color map. So that is why we are getting like this. So if you see, you are getting a color like this, a dark red. It is because of that. So you just hit this button. Yes. Yeah, actually, um, my network is down when I'm doing this uh, uh, half an hour back. So I'm facing an error. Should I, uh, shall I share my screen? Okay. Ideally, this should work. But uh, can you type ls? I just that too. Uh, so uh, the problem here is that uh, he is running. Yeah. He has installed OpenFOAM in root. If you root see, directory. his installation is in the root directory. Yeah, it's a root. It's a root. Uh, so you shouldn't do that because when you're doing installation in root, if you see the error, it is saying that calc function is not enabled, right? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, so that it. calc uh, calc function, it is not able to call because it is in the root directory. So this was working for everybody else because they installed OpenFOAM in the, as a user. Okay. Uh, so this is the problem. Okay, sir. Uh, so uh, I have to reinstall the version. Yeah, you can install, but don't install in the root directory. Install in okay. the proper OPT folder. Then this uh, permission error that is there, right? This calc function, see over here, uh, using calc entry at line 20. And there it is saying this could not be executed because administ uh, because of administrator, right? Because of security reason. Hmm. So it is because of all all those things. So there are complications in that. So I think this will this problem will be resolved if you run it as a uh, user rather than running it from root. Okay. Sir, I have a question. So yes. can we run sudo block mesh? Might that work? Uh, he, let him let him try. Hopefully <laughs> we don't know. Uh, I, we, I have not tried, but looking at the error, I I figured that this might be the error. You just try once. Okay. Sir. Uh, can you type sudo s u d o space the block mesh. Yes, U D O. Space. Okay. Uh, block mesh. Uh, no. Okay, it's not allowed. Uh, so okay. you have to reinstall in the normal folder instead of root. Okay, uh, I'll try it. Thank you. So Arun is having a suggestion. Maybe you can try that, Mohan. I think we have not tried that. So create a run directory, maybe in some other location and then go over there and then try to run. Yeah, that is possible. Thanks, Arun. We can try that. Okay, sir. I'll do that. Thank you. Uh, maybe create a run directory in home and then copy this folder over there and run the same thing. See if that works. Okay, sir. I'll check that. So which case file? the Para view case file or uh, the simulation alone because whatever the simulation you have run it is already saved in the case directory you can see the values like 0 0.01 0 0.2 so those are the time steps those are the case files actually so you need not save them separately also i think someone asked how we can plot residuals so i will try to explain it quickly um, Okay, this is the file which we used yesterday for external aerodynamics. In the functions, we had uh, three functions. The fun so the one is force coefficients, which we you know monitored. The other two are y plus and residuals. So this residual uh, function is a default function. So which we will be uh, giving inside the system. Okay, so. Either you can place the residual file here itself, or in this case, I have made a, a folder called functions and then kept the force coefficients and residuals inside that. 
So that location of the functions folder will be in the system directory. So as you can see, uh, I have the zero constant system files. This is the case directory where we ran the simulation. Inside the system, uh, we have a fo folder called functions. Inside that, I have placed the residuals. So I will open and show you what is inside residuals. So it is a very uh, default file which you can copy paste and use. Um, you can see what are the uh, values for which you want the residuals. So here I have selected P, U, E, K, Omega, and Nu T. So I just use a default file. You, uh, any standard case comes from uh, comes with the residual file, and you can copy paste. So I have done the same, and we can visualize through one method. The method is after you run the simulation, you will find a new folder which you did not create called the post processing. So only inside this we found the force coefficients. Inside that, we found the coefficients dot dat, which we used to plot to see the CDCL graph, right? So similarly, we will be using uh, foam monitor command or GNU plot command to view it. But there is a one small uh, change. If you see in the PPT, which was shared to you yesterday for viewing the force coefficients, it will have a command something like foam monitor space hyphen el and it will start with post processing and it will say uh, force coefficients and so on the hyphen l here uh, says logarithmic graph so the hyphen l will be used for cdcl graph because it is inside a very small scale up to 0 to 2.5 but the residuals we can view without using a logarithmic graph itself so the command will be foam monitor. Then we will enter into post processing folder. And inside that we will have residuals, then zero and residuals dot that. So when you hit enter, you can see the file. So actually GNU plot crashes for my system. I don't know why, but it should work for you all. Yeah, it absolutely crashes. So this is the method. That is all I wanted to say. You can you know plot it with different methods. Like you go to the post processing folder. Inside that you have residuals. Inside that you have residuals dot dat. If you open this, you will find all the residual files. Okay. Then you can copy paste this or import this file inside a Excel or Python or Google Sheets to plot this. So yeah, that's it about plotting residuals. Uh, Rishikesh, you are inside the K epsilon folder and not inside RE1 E6. So check your directory. The K epsilon is just a folder. Inside that you have two more folders called RE1 E6 and RE uh, 20 E3, right? So you have to go inside whichever uh, folder where you have the simulation. So before you type any commands related to open form, just type ls and see if you are in the right directory. Only then you have to you know, try running commands like block mesh or running simple form, whatever. Could you just repeat where we have to use the post processing command? Yeah. So, uh, when you are running it, yeah. you are in the directory of k epsilon, right? Yeah. So first type cd space whatever uh, Reynolds number you are using, RE1E6, probably, right? So once you enter into that folder, you type ls, you should be able to see the zero constant and system files. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that is the directory where you can run any open form command. Okay, so uh, as all of you have cleared your doubts, so for today, we are closing the session here. Thank you and bye-bye, everybody. Thanks for joining.